This is Karina Otoya Knapp, instructor at Bank Street College. I teach Education 505, Language Acquisition in a Linguistically Diverse Society. In this lecture, I want to give a brief summary of the main language acquisition theories that attempt to explain how human beings begin to acquire language. Many of these theories are at the root of many educational practices and strategies for learning language. The first theory I want to discuss is the behaviorist theory. B.F. Skinner proposed that language is learned like any other behavior. He concluded that children are motivated to learn language because they receive positive reinforcement or negative reinforcement when they use the acceptable or unacceptable language. He also proposed that children need repetition and practice to rehearse what they learn. In this theory, children are seen as passive recipients of external influences. Children are corrected when not using the expected language. In a classroom, you might see children receive stickers or stars for using the expected or target language. Some of the limitations of this theory include the idea that children are passive recipients of language rather than creative beings who generate language and use language in order to convey their own thinking. When carried out in the classroom, it might encourage children to enact a behavior because they will be externally rewarded. Another limitation is that research shows that parents do not tend to correct grammatical errors, but rather are more concerned with the truth of the statement put forth. The behaviorist theory cannot account for the fact that children understand much earlier than they produce language. The second theory of language acquisition that I want to consider is the Innatus model, also referred to as the psycholinguistic model. One of the main authors of this theory is Noam Chomsky. He proposes that children are born pre-wired to learn language and that we all possess these language acquisition devices, or LADs, that predispose us to learn language. The LAD consists of basic grammatical categories and rules that are common to all languages. Chomsky critiques the behaviorist model by arguing that it is impossible for children to learn all the language they have learned by age four, simply by hearing and remembering, rather um, children need only be exposed to their, for their lad to take over. You might listen to children generate and cre create complex speech. Some of the limitations of the innatus theory include the narrow focus on grammar and not on other language elements like communication. The third theory is the cognitive model, which proposes that children talk because they have something to talk about. Syntax is developed later, so a child knows that the only a few words can fit in the example, quote, the blank hit the ball. Rules of syntax tell us that the word is a noun, but semantics tells us that only certain nouns will fit in. You wouldn't say the um, car hit the ball. You might say the bat hit the ball or the child hit the ball. Uh, Piaget was very interested in the connection between cognition and language. He argued that language development is second to cognitive development. If children are exposed to multiple experiences, they will have something to talk about. The experience comes first, and then language follows. This theory pays close attention to the meanings of things. Syntax develops only as a result of the need to talk about more and more things. This theory outlines a sequence for language development that all children seem to follow. For example, from four to six months, most children begin to babble with sounds that are more speech-like. They tell you what they want by sounds and gestures. Between the ages of one and two, children say more words every month and use one or two words questions like, where's daddy and what's that? By the age of three, children have a word for almost everything and can name objects. By the age of four, people outside the family can understand a child's speech and sentences tend to have four or more words. By the age of five, children can tell stories that stick to a topic, can communicate easily, and use adult grammar. One of the limitations of this theory is that children acquire cognitive prerequisites but never develop language. Moreover, some children are more developed in language than cognitively or emotionally. The final theory I want to discuss is the social interaction model, which pays close attention to pragmatics, or language use. This theory places great emphasis on the communicative functions of language. Based on Halliday's work, Pinnell developed seven categories of language used in the classroom. 
These include instrumental language, regulatory language, interactional language, personal language, imaginative language, heuristic language, and informative language. Instrumental language is what we use to get what we want. Regulatory language is what we use to control the behavior of others. Interactional language is what we use to establish and define social relationships. Personal language is used to express our own individuality and personality. Imaginative language is used to create a world of one's own to express language through play, drama, poetry, and story. Heuristic language is used to explore the environment, to investigate and to acquire knowledge and understanding. Finally, informative language is used to communicate information, to report facts or conclusions. It is the language of schools, and teachers most frequently use and require this kind of language. It is the responsibility of teachers to develop each language function in children to help them develop in their own social milieu. This theory also proposes evidence that shows that children who have limited opportunities for interaction with adults and other children have difficulty in acquiring language. The limitations of this theory include a lack of focus on the development of syntax and it fails to account for how children follow the same sequence of language development at the same time.